Hello, hello, my paper peeps. Today I'm going to give you three ideas to help you create your own DIY scrapbook and tips on how to embellish your scrapbooks in a creative and unique way. I'm noticing a new trend that is occurring in the scrapbook crafting world. I'm seeing the emergence of what I call scrapbook journaling, a hybrid of scrapbooking for the purpose of embellishing our fondest memories and that of journaling cataloging our thoughts and feelings around those photos and those moments. This interblend of junk journaling, journaling and scrapbooking is gaining a lot of traction in the crafting community. And I want to share with you some easy tips and ideas on how you can create a unique scrapbook that you'll love to look back on or even share with the ones you love. Here are three tips and ideas to help you embellish your scrapbooks. Number one, have fun with adding wire thread or embroidery thread to your projects. This method is easy and mess-free and can add a three-dimensional effect to your layouts. There is no need to pull out the mixed media to achieve this three-dimensional effect we all love, which means no need to change your clothes or pull up your sleeves for paint splatter or embossing powder dust. Now I love the 12 by 12 layout. If you're new to scrapbooking, trying to fill out such a large surface area may be daunting. Honestly, it's still daunting to me and that's why I kind of shy away from the 12 by 12 layouts. If you want to try your hand at mixed media or junk journaling, large layouts or even your nine by six journal may also be intimidating. So I've created the recipe reels to allow you to create with little embellishing or a lot of embellishing if you want. This is my take on the modern scrapbook journal. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christine and we scrap Joe at Christine M. Leung. The past few months we have been in the postcard pages and the recipe reels, which are combined as one in what I call the blush collection. Here I show you tips and tricks on how to create a mini scrapbook journal that you can craft in all year round and be able to enjoy looking back at in the future. If you're interested in tips and tricks on how to create this mini scrapbook journal, then I'll put a link to the videos at the end of this video or in the description box below. You can also download this project and I'll put a link to that in the description box below too. Aside from including embossing thread or wire thread in your craft cart, the next tip will show you what I consider when embellishing a scrapbook journal. When it comes to scrapbook journaling, think of using the rule of thirds to allow you to create a scrapbook journal that will leave room for journaling, as well as give you an area where you can flex that creative muscle and focus on the decorating and embellishing. If you're not familiar with the rule of thirds, it's actually a composition guideline. It's a technique they use in photography, but it actually is also used in scrapbooking. It places your subject in the left or right third of an image, leaving the other two thirds more open. While there are other forms of composition, the rule of thirds generally leads to a more compelling and well-composed layout. In this case, it really leaves room for more journaling while still encouraging your creativity. I think it's a great way to meld the art of scrapbooking and journaling. Third, have fun incorporating the use of decorative art strips. This is a great way to add texture and interest to your scrapbook journals. You can use strips of different materials such as fabric, paper, and ribbon to create a unique look. On this recipe reel, I actually start off with stamps. Then I use text and washi tape to concentrate the image. I am a fan of this paint splash stamp. 
It's by Stampers Anonymous, and I'll put a link to that in the description box below too, but it has this long image that lends to this whole idea of decorative strips and acts as a base for your embellishing strips. If you're into vintage scrapbook journaling, using this technique of lifted tape text is a great embellishing strip. Make sure the text comes from old books. I usually get my pages from Etsy and they have a plethora of old book pages that I think you will really enjoy. I sometimes use ripped text like you see here and adhere that to the page and have it fold over and continue on to the other side. The reason why I might gravitate towards just ripping the text and gluing it on the page as opposed to using this lifted tape text approach is that I can distress ink the page to match the aesthetic of my journal. Unfortunately, if you ink the page first and then try to use tape to lift the image, it won't work. The ink actually prevents the image from being lifted. You can try inking the tape after, which I think works and it's fine too. Then I follow it up with visual clusters. Here I used the ephemera from the paper line to achieve this. And I just fussy cut it, but if you find that the background's too white, then you can always just distress ink it and it kind of helps it blend right into the rest of the page. The last scrapbook idea I want to share with you is embellishing your photo frame. I love glossy accents for this technique. As scrapbookers, we all love the photo mats, but in the recipe reel, we have the privilege of using accented frames using glossy accents. This is the beauty of using smaller layout pages. Then you can concentrate 3D elements like this one and not break the bank. Could you imagine trying to glossy accent a five by seven frame? Oh my goodness, I think you'd need like a whole bottle <laughs> for at least a quarter of the bottle or half the bottle to actually glossy accent the frame. In this example, I think the frames are three inches by two inches, so it's a little bit more manageable. I had a community member ask me where I get my inspiration and I told her that I look at everything as art and an inspiration for my crafting, but on a smaller scale. From the framed mirror on my wall to the bathroom hinge at the restaurant I just went to, 
By the way, this hinge will be recreated and used as a book journal closure in one of my next projects. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are interested in more tips and tricks, check out these videos or I'll put a link to some in the description box below. Until then, take care and we'll see you in those videos. Bye.